You're watching the Retro Lube Channel. You're involved in some other music projects, and isn't like your very talented wife Mary, uh, who has major music credentials herself, and your children are part of this? Yeah, we. Well, my wife and I have a group called Ten Drum, and we have about three CDs out. We've got best, uh, you know, uh, independent uh, recording, and you know, some awards for, you know, best independent albums of the year. But, uh, and our kids are involved in it now. A lot of times, we do a lot of producing now. We have several artists like Mighty Mo Rogers, great artists, people like that. Just producing a lot of stuff. Well, fill us in as to what Mary has done because she comes. Oh, okay. With well, Mary uh, toured for years with Jimmy Buffett. You know, and, uh, and she did a lot of background sessions, singing like a Pink Floyd and Animal Logic bands like that. She's a, she's a great musician. Sometimes she plays with us. Yeah, I play great oh, really? And she takes her spot. Yeah. Wow. She's our so this is the first female that ever performed she is. vocals? She is. She is. Yeah. And plays keyboards. Yeah. She, she, she's uh, Rick part two. And I read somewhere, Joe, that your studio is in, in Milwaukee that has won some sort of a well, we won awards? the it's called the Whammy Award, the Wisconsin uh, State Award for Best Studio. So it's it's a you know just a labor of love at this point, still trying to just yeah. keep putting more and more studio, into it. It's a, it's a nice room. It's a great studio. You've been in it for oh, yeah, a while. Oh yeah, we did. We've done one recording there, but we're we're uh, hoping uh, someday get, get a little more done there. Where we all have a it's it's always crazy trying to get everyone together in one spot. Of course. <laughs> Now, I had the pleasure of Ambrosia inviting me to a party at the Dakota apartment of Maestro Leonard Bernstein. How did you meet Leonard Bernstein, and what connection did he have with Ambrosia? Um, that was uh, through uh, Gordon Perry, the uh, great classical engineer, who uh, heard us auditioning a sound system at the Hollywood Bowl when he was chief consultant for the Hollywood Bowl and trying to improve the sound quality there. So there was a friend of ours that had a, one of the biggest PAs in Los Angeles, Tyco Bray Sound Company, asked us if we could go and play at the Hollywood Bowl. We were like ecstatic. I mean, we were playing like dumpy bars and biker bars and whatever we could play. So to play the Hollywood Bowl on a Sunday afternoon with about, what, nine people oh, in at attendance? Least, at least nine people. <laughs> no one was there. It was, just, it was literally just to, to hear the sound system. They had people with, running around with you know, DB meters, measuring the sound levels and mm -hmm. listening to the quality. But after we were done doing our, our music, uh, Gordon came up to us, and, you know, very distinguished English gentleman, saying, I, I was looking at my DB, and, DB meter and then suddenly I realized there was some really great music coming out of you guys. You guys, have you classically trained or anything? It was, because we were trying in our way to include, you know, ideas that were, I guess, somewhat classical, classical in nature. Yeah, and, and he was intrigued by that, and he said, well, you guys really should be more exposed to this. If you'd like to be my guest at the Hollywood Bowl, anytime you want to come, so you're welcome. Every Tuesday and Thursday night, every we went to practically every show we could. So it was like education, it was a huge education that year, seeing every piece the L.A. film would play that season. Mm. And, and the funny thing, after every show, we'd come backstage, yeah. and, and he would introduce us to, and this is Zubin Mehta, Zubin, this is Ambrosia. And then, oh, hello, Ambrosia. <laughs> Everybody thought we were a major act. You know? We were playing the YMCA. You know, I mean, we, we, whether we could. And, you know, we met Georg Solti, we met Lucas Foss. Actually, when we met Lucas Foss, we played. Zubin Mehta had asked us to play at, with the Philharmonic a year after we met these guys. He had heard us at a, a show that Gordon oh, had set Royce up at Hall. Royce Hall in LA, our first big debut, really, coming out. And, and, Zubin heard us there and, and thought of us when they needed a rock band for a symphonic piece that uh, Lucas Foss was conducting. So we got a call to play with Ella Philharmonic a year later. So it turned into something real. 
after being like just this nine people, we were playing suddenly at the bowl with the LA Philharmonic. One thing led to another. You know, it's you know we we met uh, uh, one person who turned this on to another person. You know, and demos that we did at A and M became the the deal that we got over at 20th Century Fox. Right. You know, it it's like you never know where. It's, it's going to come from, you may be in one, going in one direction, but all of a sudden it, you get approached from this direction. 